You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws Podcast, with your hosts, Derek Nasty, Son of Meyer, and former Philadelphia Flyer Enforcer, Riley Cote, as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. This week's guest is coach of the 2019 Stanley Cup champion St. Louis Blues, Craig Ruby. Time to face off. Welcome back to Nasty Knuckles. I'm Riley Cote. I'm Derek Suttlemeyer, and today we have... uh Absolute awesome guest here with us, uh, Craig Barubi, known as the Chief. Welcome. Thanks for having me, boys. Appreciate it. Good oh, to see, see you guys. Yeah. Been a while, Ralph, since I've seen been a while. you. Yeah. yeah. It's good Looking to see you again, good, man. buddy. You too. Uh, we were very excited about having you on, man. Obviously, uh, I've known you since I was 16 years old and, uh, pretty good buddies, but, uh, number seven all time in penalty minutes in the National Hockey League, uh, 1,054 games, that's so impressive, honestly, and uh, 250 fighting majors, knuckling it up a little bit, big boy. <laughs> um, just uh, wanted to start by asking you a few questions that uh, I know we've talked about a lot over the years, but um, coming out of junior, you know, you scored some goals in junior. Um, Riles, you did too. Yeah. And then, uh, by accident, by accident. But, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, seriously though, I remember us talking before about you coming into your first pro camp and what a rodeo it was. Like, talk about that maybe a little bit. I, like, like, I remember you saying, like, you, like in practices, you just, guys want to fight. But, yeah. I mean, well, well, I broke in the league. It was 86 was my first pro, ca- pro camp. And, uh, you know, like you're right. You play junior hockey and you, you put points up because everybody does, right? It's junior hockey. I mean, it's, um, even like, especially back then, I think more than now, I think it, you know, it was easier for a guy like me to score some goals and, and make some plays back then. The game was different than it is now, obviously. I think it's tougher now, but you know, my first pro camp, I come into camp there and, um, I was pretty nervous. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, they got Dave Brown and all these guys, right. on, you know, in Philly and you got Mike Keenan, uh, coaching that team. So, you know, we had a lot of, um, scrimmages. Like it was a lot of, uh, scrimmaging back then compared to nowadays. Right. Yeah. And, you know, camps were like two a days and, uh, probably running two weeks on the ice. Maybe not that long, but around there, you'd, you'd scrimmage or practice for a week and a bit before you played an exhibition game. And I was right out of the gate, first camp, first game, you know, I'm fighting. I don't even know who I'm fighting. Like, <laughs> I remember, uh, I, um, Eddie Hospar had a couple fights with him and, and I'm on the training table, um, after the scrimmage and Eddie's right there. Yeah. Good job, kid. That was a good fight out there. We had, it's like nothing, you know, but the one guy I had on my team at that time, we all have these teams. There's like four teams. I had Brad McCrimmon, who was unreal guy. Um, the late Brad McCrimmon. Um, he was sitting beside me. He made me feel so good and comfortable with everything going on. Cause I was nervous. I'll tell you what, you know? <laughs> but he was, he was a great guy. And, um, you know, he was the kind of guy that just made you feel good about everything. So yeah. were you, were you a fighter in junior? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I mean, I ended up, I scored 30 goals all my last year and stuff, yeah. but, uh, yeah, you know, that's what I did. Yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. But you get to pro hockey, you got to understand how you're going to stay there. That's right. hundred the right, percent. What you, what you want to do? Like, you may not like your job. Not, I'm not, I'm, I don't know too many guys that really like that kind of job, but it's a job and you got to go and do it. And, yeah. You know, it feels good to do it for your teammates, obviously, but, uh, that's the way you make a living. You did it for and, eight yeah, years. No, yeah, yeah, Seven, I know. Mean, yeah. That's 18 what it years. boils down to, really. I mean, consistency, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you were as consistent as you, they got. You were a gamer. You and, could have uh, probably, like, you know, if you think about it, you probably could have made, I could have made myself a better player if you really focused on it and maybe pushed yourself or, you know, took that chance a little bit to make yourself better. Yeah. Which some guys did. You yeah. Know, there was guys That's a hard one. I mean, we talked about this last uh, last episode with Hartsey, uh, you know, for myself and not that I was anywhere in, in your in your league as far as, you know, games and, and the whole bit, but uh, it's a hard one because, you know, you're going to war and it's hard to like say, oh, I'm not going to focus on fighting. I'm going to focus on being a player and then you kind of, you feel like you're letting your guard down almost, you know, but yeah. that's one thing I regret, more, you know, most is 
is, is my inability to really focus on me being a hockey player. I was so consumed by the role, but I think you did a better job at that. And obviously you I mean, to, to stick around 17 years, 17 seasons isn't by accident. So you have to be able to play the game enough. And you got like Proby and some of these other guys, like at some point they were able to play regular shifts and, and, and you know, contribute, yeah. you know, no, for on sure. the score sheet too. I think you're 16 or 17 years old. You're playing junior season ends. You're ready to go home. You know, like you're still a kid. You want to go home for the summer and the coach grabs you, tells you you're not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So I went, I left to home at 16, went and played junior A hockey in Williams Lake, BC. It was like, um, that league wasn't major junior. It was like a step below. Um, so I went and played there and it was great. Like, uh, our coach was, he was not so. His name is John Van Horlick and he's a great guy. Uh, I'm still friends with him today, but, um, so he, he really is the reason that I probably made it to pro hockey. Like he, he, groom me into what I had to be and and how to become that and you know did a lot of uh, boxing and all this stuff so anyways at the end of the season he comes up to me and he goes what's your plans I'm like well I'm going to go back home to Calahu my hometown and probably play some baseball in the summer and you know work and hang out and whatever and he goes nah he goes I got a ball team here you can play for but I got this so you think you're tough and I want you to fight in it <laughs> and I said really With men. So, with oh, yeah. grown men. This was like a legit, and I go, all right, so what's the plan? Who's going to train me? And he goes, I am. <laughs> I go, so he goes, yep, you'll come over to my house every day. We'll go down in my basement, put the gloves on, and we'll spar and, and train, and then my wife will feed you and you can go, go home. I said, all right, sounds good. Like, I'm, you know, I'm just, I did whatever he said. Right, yeah. yeah. So I go over there and we put the gloves on, and we got, that's it. There's no headgear, there's no mouthpieces, there's nothing put the gloves on and like fight. And this guy was tough as nails. Like he was, a, he actually played in that, uh, you know, slap shot, the movie they called the iron league. He yeah. actually played in that league. Wow. And, Boy. and, uh, so he was a tough guy himself. <laughs> so we, we'd go at it down there. I don't know how many times a week, but <laughs> ended up going in that. So you think you're tough. And I ended up fighting it and I ended up winning it and, wow. uh, won a thousand dollars. 16 years old. Man, eh? It was a lot of money then. Oh, yeah, right. What happened in that You're 16 final years fight. old, man. The final fight got a little yeah, crazy. Yeah, got a little it? crazy. I fought this big biker, and, you know, he wasn't, you know, he was just a biker. Like, he's a big guy, tough, you know, and I could fight. I was a pretty good boxer, and I was, I was giving it to him pretty good, and he kicked me in the nuts. And not only once, and I thought, the, you know, they'd stop the fight or kick him out, I was hoping. No, keep her going. <laughs> Look, he kicked me again, <laughs> and then... In between, as he kicked me again, through the ring comes my coach. And there's all these people in the ring. They're kind of going at it like he's trying to fight the guy. You know, it was like a brawl. <laughs> I was in there like, are you kidding me? And uh, they just kept it going, though. Never stopped it. And I ended up fighting him, and, and uh, I won won the thing. So it was, it was pretty funny. I mean, uh, to think back of that, like, it was, like, unreal. Like, 16 years old to be able to do that. Right. You know? That's awesome. Is that like what prompted you to take on that role? Is like you, you, between that experience well, and your and your coach himself? I mean, kind of yeah, instilling I think he, that. Like he just taught me to be, you know, to to um, just be tough, be tough to yeah. do that role. Like right? you know, you, you know, I don't think that was really in me just to go out and do that. Like, but he, you know, he really pushed me and yeah. kind of got me over the edge. It was pretty funny. And a, another funny story about him, so I had the Stanley Cup this year back in my hometown, Callahoo, or a year ago or whatever, and this guy <laughs> drives down from Williams Lake, B.C., or around there he lives. He's a rancher now. He has a big ranch. It's probably about 15-hour drive, I would say. Rolls in a town. Our town's nothing. Like you, But he ended up going to my buddy's mom's house, and... Um, my buddy Bruce calls me up. He goes, yeah, your old coach is at my mom's. And I go, what are you doing? Oh, he's having a nap. My mom fed him and everything. He's having a nice nap. He says, you'll see you over at the party. And I'm laughing. I'm like, what is going on? Did he know this, them? No. He just cruised around. And he found, needed a place to go. So he comes to the Stanley Cup party, and he's there, and I'm talking to him for a bit. And he goes, well, let's go I'll take a picture with the cup. Take a picture of the cup. See you later. I go, were you leaving? And he goes, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out. 
I'm like, well, you want to hang around and party and hang out? No, I'm good. See you later. And he left. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Oh man, he's crazy. He's well, he's a great guy though. Yeah, a oh, little different. Like yeah, who's the toughest? Toughest opponent? Well, I think Probert because yeah. I probably because I fought him seven or eight times yeah. in my career, but just all around toughness and take a punch and give it. You right. know, he, you know, he was uh, he was legit. Yeah. I mean, I. I hit, I have a couple of fights I I hit him as hard as I could hit a guy and it, like he just kept coming, you know he was just yeah, <clears throat> and he was you know and he was a um, great guy and fair too you know yeah like, he had me down a couple of times but he he was always good about it never hit me when I was down or nothing like, yeah he was really good I really respected Proby a lot yeah but in saying that there was a lot of guys yeah right yeah in that era a lot of guys. You know, you can't take anything away from Ty Domi or McSorley or any of these guys. Sure. Like, there's a lot of them that were legit. Yeah, in oh, my yeah. era. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a different animal back then. Yeah. Yeah. How, how was it uh, <clears throat> night before or day of after you have your lunch, trying to take a nap, going into Detroit? Yeah, not good. I mean, <laughs> you, <laughs> so we go in. I fought Proby uh, in the Spectrum twice that game. No, I fought him. Uh, fought him. It was the um, first time I fought him. I'm in the penalty box, and Joey Kosher came by the box, and there was no glass in or nothing, right? And he goes, I'm next. Be ready. And I know Kosher from junior. I'm like, oh, that's all I need to hear. Five minutes <laughs> yeah, of, right. sitting here thinking about that shit. So I get out of the box. I fight Kosher. And then I, Proby and I kind of went at it again. So like a day in between, we go to Detroit. We're playing in Detroit, and I'm like, oh, my God, the night before the game. It's hard to really relax, and I'm with uh, Rick Talk at Mellonby and these guys, and we're, you know, we're joking and laughing about it, you know, having a good time. So after warm-up, Keenan comes in and scratches Dave Brown. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I go to Talk. I go, are you kidding me right now? And Talk's losing it because why would he scratch Brownie? Yeah, right. Because I was Keenan. He did this shit on purpose. Like, he was like, you know, he wanted to see like what we were going to do with all Brownie and all right, right, you know, yeah. cuz Brownie's the man. And so I ended up I ended up fighting probably two more times that game too, wow. but so I four, wasn't four too, times in a, in 3 days. Yeah. Well, that was tough. Yeah. That was That's tough. No joke. But you know, it was like um I think it really established me though, like, you know, to do oh, that yeah. and yeah. to get that opportunity too, you know. Yeah, which I was bet. Good. So, yeah, speaking of Uncle Mikey, how was that? Uh, he Mike? was pretty good to you, right? Yeah, like he, he... I I didn't mind him. Like Mike was, um, I thought he was really good. To be honest with you, he gave me a chance. He liked me, you know. So I can't I can't say anything really negative about the guy. I think if you stood up to Mike, you were fine. If you didn't, then he'd keep taking advantage. Yeah, take advantage. That's basically yeah. what it boiled down to with him. Um, you know, I thought as a coach, and I didn't know this stuff back then, but as a coach now. He was on the cuff of practices and all that stuff and how you ran things. He was ahead of his curve by all, like a long shot with all these guys. Really? Practices were short and fast. Yeah. Rest, all that stuff. He was really good about that kind of stuff. Yeah. But he was, but he was hard on some guys, you know, like Scott Mellenby and some other guys that was like not good, not good the way he treated them. (laughs) Lindsey Carson was telling me a story. Lindsey, too. He was tough on him. And yeah, he was. He was yeah. telling the story where you guys <clears throat> took you guys to Lake Placid. Yeah. Uh, you had a tough start to the season, and he took you guys up there or something Something that effect. Yeah, he, he dressed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he dressed and uh, came into the dressing room where we were dressing, and he goes, well, boys, here's your chance. I'm ready. And he had full gear on. Let's go. <laughs> went out, and then we went out and scrimmaged. <laughs> did anyone go? Nobody did nothing. No. No. <laughs> Jeez, I would take it. I would take a big set of balls to do that. Oh yeah, you know? but right. I mean, that was him. You know, he kind of he put himself on the line too a little bit at yeah. times. You know, when he thought it was the right thing. But he, Mike was fine though. You yeah, know? I didn't mind Mike. His strategies wouldn't work in today's game though. Hey, eh? the way he uh, probably no. I and... mean, today's game you got to really communicate with everybody, right. and you know you got to be just. I think more honest than anything with right. everybody. That's what they want to hear. They want to hear honesty yeah. players nowadays. And they're actually, they're not naive at all. They all know what's going on. And yeah. they're all very, very uh, confident people. 
like whether you come out of college, junior, or whatever, yeah. they come into pros, they're confident guys. And they yeah. think they know they're good players and they know they're going to play. Right. Whether they play here or there, or whatever, they they know they're going to play. So you got to be honest with them and just direct. I think that's the best. That's the best way that's worked for me, anyhow, with all these guys. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. And understand them a little bit. You know, kids today are different. Oh yeah. Uh, they just got a different head, different mindset, do different things than you did or yeah. that they did 10 years ago, you know? Yeah. Do you find the young guys uh, coming up are more, are more entitled than they were because of like, you know, like it's, it's well, progress? It, but yeah. It's, I, I'm not, it might be entitled, but it's more, I think that, like I said, they're real confident. Yeah. But also they have a lot of people telling them they're good. Right, right. You know, like when you played or when I played or uh, back in the day and, and you, you play in basketball and things that you played, soccer and that stuff, People didn't tell you that stuff all the time. Your parents didn't, that's for sure. Yeah. Like I didn't, my parents were telling me that I was great all the time. But now, in today's world, I think that you hear that a lot from a lot of different people. So when they get the pro, they think, well, I should be playing all the time because yeah. I'm, I'm good. Right. Yeah. But huh? You're, it doesn't work that way, you know. So it takes some work, but it's, you know, they're, I don't, they're good kids. They're yeah. all pretty good kids. No, I know, like from my brief, uh, my brief coaching uh, um, experience with the Phantoms, there and just like, you know, going from a player to you know to a coach, and you know, being on that side of the fence, and, and realizing that, I mean, you, you have to be a good communicator. You know, you yeah. said these days, back in the day, you, if you didn't hear from your coach, it was a good thing, right? I mean, it was, and if you heard from him, you're probably getting sent down or you're scratched. But I think like the players want to, they want to hear from you, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. They just want to know where they stand so they can improve. And I think. Um, you know that, that that's important because I mean coaching is communication. But I think uh, what I what I saw a lot of was, was just like you know some of these younger guys. Maybe maybe it was more in the minors that they just felt like they should be with the big club. You know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. It was just like oh well you know he's there and I'm better than him. I was drafted higher and this and that and it, yeah. it was more like bringing out the oven mitts and you know kind of like coddling these guys and kind of you know putting them back. Yeah, into I think their, in the minors you, you you would hear more of that and that's true. Like I've coached the minors and they. You know, somebody gets called up. Why isn't it me? Or right. you know, they yeah, that's for sure. That that comes into play a lot. Yeah, you, know? you had a player with the Phantoms who was a good player, had a lot of potential. Um, Rosie, St- uh, Stefan uh, Rosicka. Rosicka. And I remember the one night you telling me I was with the Flyers, but you were coaching the Phantoms, and he scored a goal. Nice goal comes back, throws you the puck. <laughs> Give well, it to I, the GM up yeah, there. Yeah, he, he wow. got called up. And I think he scored in the, up in the NHL. Yeah. He may have played two games. I can't remember. And he come back down, and we're playing at home in the Spectrum there. And he scored a goal, and he he had he got the puck somehow. I don't know how he just picked it up or how he got it. And he come back and he tossed me. Why don't you go give that to the GM? Wow! <laughs> I just said you. Why don't <laughs> you, you go do that? <laughs> He's right up there. Yeah, yeah right. you know where he is. Yeah, <laughs> you know, go walk up there and give it to him. We won't miss you that much. Just yeah. go ahead. And do it. <laughs> We were wow. uh, funny story, Chief. Like I think the reason you're so successful, <clears throat> I know from when you coached here in Philadelphia, and I was a part of it. The players, like you said, you, you're honest with them, whether they want to hear it or not. I think that's what everyone wants to hear in life, right? Really. For I sure. Mean, yeah. uh, but the way you can mess around with the boys a little bit it's always been great. And I remember I walked down the hallway to see Chief one morning and just say what's up and. One of your players is coming in, uh, uh, Laura Johnson. Oh. <laughs> he had had a tough night the night, and he was up and down. He was a big yeah. pick, I guess, originally. Uh, and then he went back into the draft, ended up coming to the Flyers. So really nice guy, but he comes cruising in the door, and I'm I'm standing in Chief's like doorway, and he walks in. He's got a big dip in, you know, so oh, yeah, gate thirty and Warren. Hey, Chief. Hey, Nasty. What's up? She goes, hey, Lars. And he turns back because he goes, yeah. He goes, you know what? I, I was thinking last night. And Lars is like, oh, yeah? What, what were you thinking? He goes, you should quit hockey. <laughs> <laughs> and Lars just dies laughing. And he goes, she goes, no, no, I'm serious. You should quit. <laughs> You're awful. And he oh, walks right? away. I, I laughed all my, And he laughed. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he was, was such a, he was he was a gentle, a gentle human. So hey? yeah. That's yeah. pretty good. You should quit hockey. You got you to gotta mess around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah, keep it light. I, I I mess around with that Tyler Bozak a lot. He's a funny guy, man. We have a good time together. There was a funny uh, scenario happened. I'm in Anaheim. We're in Anaheim, and after the morning skate, 
I go do the press, right? So they got this thing up in the hallway or whatever, and I'm talking to the media, and there's a guy standing beside me. I didn't even see or look, and it was a dad's trip. We're on a father's oh, trip. Oh, my God. I think I saw this. And all of a sudden, they go, this guy wants to ask you a question. And I turn. It's Tyler Bozak's old man. <laughs> Almost saw that. I swear to God, <laughs> and he caught me off guard. And he says, "Okay, I, you know, I just want to ask you a couple of questions here, and uh, just about Tyler Bozak. He's had a real good year and going real well. I'm just wondering why his ice time's not up a little bit more, and blah blah." And in my head, I'm like thinking, "What am I going to say to him?" And then I go, oh, "Well, you know, I we uh, we broke down Tyler's goals this year, and uh, he, I think he's got 14 goals so far this year. And uh, uh, as a coaching staff, we broke the goals all down, and and the minutes he played that game, and it was right around 13. So that's why we keep him there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Wow. It was so funny. He's a I funny, did, he's a funny guy. That. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. He's uh, joking around a lot and stuff, so it was pretty funny that happened. Oh, man. Boy, has got a kick out of it. Yeah. I, I talked to uh, Braden Shin quite a bit, and he's. I usually talk to you every other day at least or something like that when you're not too busy, but uh, I'll hear something from you, and then I get it back from Shin. Sure. You should have heard your boy last night on the bench. Oh, I, you guys were playing in Detroit at the beginning of last season. Oh, yeah. And you kind of blew a lead. You called a timeout. And the boys come over. They're kind of looking at you. And you're like, oh, no, boys, I'm letting Larkin get some rest here <laughs> so he can score the next goal because you're letting him do everything he wants or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Obviously, you're kidding around. But yeah. oh, man. He, he, he called me that day. He said, that you should classic. have heard. I, he goes, I couldn't. I like had to just put my head down. I'm laughing so hard. Oh, that's oh, no, great. No, no, I'm just letting Larkin get some rest here. Yeah, there's, no, that's some, there's some funny stuff said on a bench at times. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we, we, hey, you got you know the guys. The guys understand. They're yeah, we're gonna do a new asshole. They know they yeah. need to reset. Michael Raffle was one of your, your oh, favorites. Raff, yeah. Oh, Raff, Raff, Daddy. I like getting on Raff. Yeah. He was good. To get he on. loved it. Too. He loved it, and he played better. He did. Yeah. You know, he played better <laughs> when you got on him, and and you know, just be hard on him. But and then also, but be hard on him, but also have some fun with him. You know, about it all. Yeah. And make the boys laugh a little bit about it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So. Yeah. He was good, Raph. He he played well that year. He got twenty goals that year. Yeah, he sure he did. played really well. I like Raph. He should have given yeah. you some of that money from that Probably deal should've. he got. <laughs> he, uh, we were, some guys are overpaid. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we had uh, Scott Hartnell here uh, last week, and we were talking about Yogs being here. And obviously, he played against Yogs and everything. But I used to love how you two went at each other. You know, it was all yeah. obviously in fun. But we were talking about on the power play when he'd get that puck over on the wall and he would just stand there with it <laughs> and he'd come back to the bench and you'd just give him a pat and go, well, you're their best penalty killer, Yogs. <laughs> and he would die laughing. You know, like, I you know where that it. started in New York when he was playing in New York and I was doing a penalty kill in Philly here and I was like, boys, watch him. He'll kill it off himself. He just goes <laughs> up and down, up and down a half wall and he'll kill off 30 seconds himself. Just leave him there. Yeah. Don't pressure him or nothing. He'll kill it off. He'll just hold it. He laughed. He did laugh. Yogs grabbed me one time on a plane ride. It was right before a playoff. And he says, I want to talk to you for a second. So we go in the back of the plane and he goes, I just wanted to be honest with me. You know, I'm, I'm an older guy. You know, it's like I should, probably shouldn't even be playing anymore, but I'm still playing. He goes, am I slow out there? Am I, like, and I, I looked at him. I'm like, you've always been slow. <laughs> <laughs> and he started laughing. He goes, good. I just wanted to know. <laughs> I said, you've been slow your whole career. Oh, man. Uh, Guy's jacked, though. Oh, he worked hard. He's man. strong he, as hell. Yeah, he, he worked hard. I liked Yogs. I was. He was. I thought he was real good for our team. Yeah. Good for our young guys. You know, sure. taught them how to work. Yeah. He worked. He worked really hard. Extra and always skating extra. And he wore that weight vest every practice. I think it was like twenty five pounds. That's crazy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it was Running good. that stew. He ran in that thing. <clears throat> yeah, he was crazy. He he worked extremely hard. Yeah. Good guy. They were talking to Hartsy about playing with him, and he had, Hartsy had his best season with uh, with the Augs there that oh, year. Yeah. And well, because he pushes. hangs on to the puck. Yeah, like you know, he doesn't give the puck up. Uh, he, you know, he's he's one of the best all time at hanging on to the puck in the offensive zone. Yeah. That's why people yeah. have success. Eventually, things will break down, and you know, a guy like Hartsy gets them opportunities. He scores. Yeah. yeah How about when Hartsy threw his glove on the guy in the breakaway? <laughs> that was Remember a, that? Oh, yeah. Was a, that was he had been on the ice man. for about a minute. He, he said tra- his brain wasn't working. Brain? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that might be the dumbest thing I've ever seen, I told him. <laughs> yeah, well, oh. 
But then the guy got a penalty shot and never scored either. Yeah, I know, right? We all laughed about it. When you uh, obviously started here in Philly and then you ended up uh, Toronto, Calgary, and one of one of the guys, one of my guys I, I got to spend a little bit of time with one year in Florida was uh, Greg Smith, uh, the bird dog, oh, the other bird, bird dog. dog. And um, I know, I forget the story exactly, maybe you can tell us about it, but when he... Uh, you ended up trading for him in Calgary, and he comes, yeah. and you guys go to have lunch the one day and shoot some pool. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell us. <laughs> we're, so I played with Bird here. I grew, yep, we we right. broke into Philly together. We played in Hershey together. We lived together. I mean, he had a couple screws loose, maybe. He's the craziest human being I've ever been, <laughs> yeah, I've been around. He was really? Not he was not close. Anywhere, too. Like golf course, anywhere. There was always something going on, an altercation. <laughs> And <laughs> like no matter what, he found trouble or he looked for it more than yeah. anything. But, yeah. So we're playing Quebec <laughs> Nordiques and they had that Kevin Kaminsky on that team too. So I ended up playing with Killer. Right, Kevin Wash, Kaminsky, right, his right, nickname's yeah. Killer. I played with him and Wash too, great guy. And I'm on Calgary. Doug Risebrow's the coach and the GM. And there's a brawl, like a five on five going on, and Bird Dog and Kaminsky are out there. And I'm on the bench watching, and I'm like, look at these two clowns. <laughs> and they're going, everybody's going at it, and Bird comes by our bench and he goes, who's next? And this is in that old Quebec Coliseum. And <laughs> I'm laughing because I know him, but everybody else is like scared. Like, yeah. he's an intimidating guy, he's a big guy. And Doug Reisbach goes, who's that? <laughs> who's go, that? Greg Smythe is his name. Yeah. Well, where'd he come from? And I told him. I said, well, I played with him in Philly and stuff like that and told him his whole deal and all that stuff. And he trades for him the next week. <laughs> he's a there. Oh, yeah. Moved right in with me. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets there. And um, like two days later or whatever, you know, we're sitting at home. And he goes, let's go over to the bar and shoot some pool. <laughs> I said, all right. So we go to a bar down the road a little ways and. You know, and I don't know if in the United States they do this, but in Canada you got to write your name up like on the yep. board who's up and all that. Yeah. So he goes to the bartender. He goes, "Give me a bottle of Jack Daniels." <laughs> the bartender goes, "I can't do that." You know, and he goes, "What do you mean? Just give me a bottle of Jack Daniels and a glass of ice." Can't do that. We'll pour it in that pitcher. Pour the bottle of JD in the pitcher. Give him the pitcher and a glass of ice. Walks over to the pool tables, puts it down, sees all the names up, races them. Bird dog versus chief. Then he goes over to the pool table and he says, "Boys, you're done." Wow! <laughs> Grab all the balls and wrap them up. These guys are looking. Do they want to go? Oh, they got a little upset, but I guess happened. so. Yeah. And Bird and I shot pool till he was done drinking his JD, and we went home. Wow, it was unreal. <laughs> I had to, I had to deal with that all the time with him. With him, oh man! But he was a. Great guy, genuine guy, do anything for you. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Guys loved him. He guys was, loved he him. He was a great awesome guy. Awesome guy. He made me laugh every day in Florida there. He was he was a lot of fun to be around. Yeah, that's right. He was in Florida. <clears throat> uh, with uh, you guys. So you, you end up, when you're with the Flyers, big rivalry then was with the Caps. And you and Del Hunter used to have your kind of run in. Well, everybody did with yeah. see the way he played. I mean, you got to respect that guy's not very big. He scored. You kind of did it all, but uh, you get traded there, yeah. And you guys hate each other. Well, I, yeah, it was like we went at it a lot in uh, Washington, Philly, and not only him, Scott Stevens, Hatcher. There was a bunch right. of guys. It yeah. was a pretty heated rivalry. Um, and I get traded to Wash, and you know, it's just it was really different going there. To be honest with you, and a lot of those guys, um, and Huntsy and I. We didn't even really talk the first year or nothing. Really? We were on the same team. Like, it was like... Still so, some beef there almost? Nah, I don't even really know. No. It just didn't, you know. But then, you know, he moved in next to me like the next year, and we hung out, you know, for seven, eight years, played together and hung out every day uh, for that long and just, you know, became one of my best friends. Yeah. But it was, And he's a great guy, and uh, we had some good times, some fun, a lot of fun playing with him. And he's a hell of a hockey player too, yeah. you know, but... Mm. Uh, that's kind of how I got into coaching, I think, is just being with him and, um, you know, watching games till hours of the morning, the late games, and talking about hockey. And that's all he cared about. And, you know, it's obviously successful, runs a junior yeah, team and coaches. Very, very and, uh, successful, yeah. I think that's how I got into coaching, too, was uh, just being around him and, 
and learning the game from him and just everything, you know. Yeah. And super guy. But he is a screw loose. For yeah, sure, that guy, yeah. I know. A We've of, talked a few stories he, uh, yeah. with him and his family. And <clears throat> The best was a couple times. Uh, you know, he was older then, and he goes, we'd go out for a shift and, or, you know, and he'd go to me, listen, we got to get something going here. Nothing's going on in this game. I'd say, okay. So he says, I'm going to start it and make sure you get in there. Like, so we'll get <laughs> going. Course. And it, a couple times where I don't know, I was ended up with some other guys and he ended up with a tough guy on the other team. <laughs> and he got the shit kicked out of him a couple <laughs> times. And I'd come in the room and he'd go, where were you? <laughs> he got to get in there. I said, I don't know. I had a couple guys yeah, driving me and one guy stuff. At I time. couldn't get in there. Oh, it was man. pretty funny. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's such a good dude. It was funny because as a kid growing up, like, I couldn't stand him. I didn't know him just yeah. because of the whole rivalry. And then, you know, knowing you and then you're there and you guys became such good buddies. And I was able to meet him and, yeah. you know, I have a couple beers. With oh, him, so what a great guy. Yeah, man. he was hard to stand when you were playing against him. God, yeah. he was, you know, mean, dirty, like yeah. just yeah. agitating. He probably should have played for the Flyers. Yeah, yeah he no, was right. a flyer a back flyer, in the day, man. you know. He would have been. He would have been a yeah, great flyer. for sure. What a good dude, though. Yeah. What a good dude. I was thinking when I was coaching the Phantoms the year we won, our left side was like we had Riles, Riley Cote, Josh Gratton, and Todd Fedorik all on the left side. Yeah, right. You can't get tougher than that. Oh, but Eags, yeah. Eags, Eags floating around and there. Eags was, the oh, and Eags. Yeah. That was the other guy. Ben I was Eager. thinking of the other guy. So that was our left wingers, all four of them. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of. That's, that's right. a lot of. Uh, we were, we had everything that year. We won one here with uh, that side of it. Good players, you yeah. know, good D. That was a fun season. Yeah. yeah, it didn't didn't feel like we lost too many games that year. Where we went on a we had broken a record. I think it we had broke seventeen broke games. Since. Yeah, yeah uh, Norfolk had broke yeah, like twenty four games. Ago, or but, like that. but I was going to actually ask you about that team uh, <clears throat> the year before that when you were trying to like catch on. So you came over with us. You were playing a little bit, and you kind of turned into the role being an assistant coach and, and the guys obviously loved you having around and they definitely loved having you in the lineup. I remember us being in Albany and they had a couple guys there, but we had you, we had Vandermeers, both. We had, uh, <laughs> had Stalker, Jimmy, Stalker. Stalker. Bolaris was down. Fridge got sent down. Wow. I mean, there was, I mean, it was a tough, I mean, even smaller guys like Mark Murphy, like you, yeah. Murph yeah, was yeah. pretty Murph tough, was tough for a yeah. little guy. Like he could is a good middleweight, lightweight, whatever you want to say. But I remember walking down and I had to use their machine <clears throat> for rivets. And their equipment guy was standing there and he goes, I've been doing this for fifteen years and I've <laughs> never seen a team more quiet and <laughs> shitting their pants than this team in there. I'm like, what like really? And I mean obviously I knew how tough you guys were yeah. in the team we had. Plus we were good. But uh, yeah. he goes, no, no, they're in there talking about it. Hey, boys, don't do anything stupid. <laughs> they got this and that right off the and right off the hop. Stalker fought someone because he ran someone, and he ends up fighting right away. But I was just going to ask you about that team. Like we had that big brawl where Litz came flying, yeah. and Neil Little jumps in. Yeah, was in uh, Damn, Bingham, lucky Bingham didn't Bingham slit someone's head off with his blade. Yeah, it was in uh, in Philly, yeah, obviously. Philly, Philly against Bingo, right? And Johnny Stevens was coaching, <clears throat> so there's a five-on-five, five, really six-on-six. Six. Litz came down, and then would it take a half hour to break, to figure everything out? So then Johnny puts the next five out, and you, I remember you going, hey. And he's like, wait, I want to hold on. I want you to go next. <laughs> and she's so cheap still on the bench. See another? Stalker's like, I'll never forget, they were kind of, you guys are kind of talking at the bench and they blow a whistle, so we're going down to their end. Thank God. If Ray would have been in there, Ray Emery, oh, if Razor yeah. hadn't been tossed, I don't know if Stalker would have done it, but he goes, watch this. So he goes down, ref drops the puck, he skates right to the goalie, runs him right into the one, here we go again. Another, oh, yeah. another just absolute yeah. shit show. And then you got out there, but you wanted Brookbank. You know, a little guy, guy. You know, this little European guy. Well, that's because Brookbank wouldn't go near you, but I was just going to ask you about that and, like, yeah, that was your a, time that year. Well, I was, oh, it was great uh, to be around the guys and, you know, just to be around all those guys and uh great group of guys for sure. Really good. And, you know, just them Vandermeer boys were, were awesome too. And during that <laughs> brawl, I was, like, watching these. I watched Jimmy and uh, Pete. 
they're fighting at McGrath. And I think they yeah. traded him off on about two or three times. <laughs> I was like, man, these guys are nuts. <laughs> Actually, I swear I to God, like, oh, you God. said to me after the game, I was in the back room there just kind of fixing it up because we had to play the next night, I think, and I was trying mm. to get things together. And Chief comes in, grabs a beer. He says, Whoa, I'll tell you what, them Bannermere boys are fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> I started laughing. He goes, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. I'm like, well, you never seen you when you get going? But they no, were, was, they were great. Was quite man. a brawl, for sure. Yeah. No, I was great. That was a great Great group of guys. I'm glad that that I, you know, did what I did. Uh, you know, started working there and coaching with those guys, and it was great. I loved it. I loved it. Um, wouldn't trade it for anything. To you know, I mean, I I maybe could have went and played maybe another year somewhere, but I knew I was kind of done inside. Yeah. But so I was uh, I was lucky to get involved with uh, the Phantoms and uh, work with a great group of guys and and just learning from Johnny Stevens too. You know, as a coach, he was a smart guy and a, and a good coach. So I got I got uh, good grooming from him. You know, first year coaching. But uh, you know, those games slow, there were some tough hockey back then, boy. Yeah, like going into yeah. Norfolk too. Oof. And those yeah, games they were tough. And, oh, yeah. like, holy That's right. Shit. Like a lot of uh, lot of action all the time. Yeah, a lot of action. It was good, good hockey and tough hockey. Yeah, it sure was. Well, I think uh, for you, Chief, like transitioning from player to coach. I mean, I had you as assistant coach for the <laughs> Phantoms and Flyers, briefly as a head coach for the Phantoms. Uh, um, you know what I appreciated you, about you was it was like you just you you, you brought your philosophy for, uh, of your playing days into your coaching. It was nothing more than like the simple fundamentals of the game. Like I, I didn't think you overcomplicated the game like some of these coaches do. Um, maybe there wasn't that much analytics, m- maybe in that moment back then. But just meat and potatoes. Like you just demanded hard work and you know the, the fundamentals of your players. And and you brought that to the Flyers when you coached there. And I mean, you know, the hard work. You know, getting these guys into shape, like simple skating. You know, and then you did the same thing in St. Louis. It took you what a month or so to get the guys going, and then all of a yeah. sudden you you know it's like. It's not rocket science. I think no. you just like you just uh, you know you, the, you stay game, true to the game. Yeah, and like there's a lot of analytics in a game. You got to look at them and you got to uh, figure out what what works for your team. I right. think, you know, more, so I can't go off of every team. Just what works for us and how we want to play the game. You know, yeah. and what type of team we have. And you're right. You got to compete hard and you got to work hard, and and that's a big part of it. And I think you know we got to we demand it. Um, in St. Louis, it's team first. It has to be. Yeah. And when it's not, that's you know the coach's job to take care of that kind of stuff. And we, and we we do. I got a great staff there with guys, ex players that played the game, um, that been around and know the game. So it's nice. But uh, you know, like you said, it's not rocket science. It's basically it boils down to, you know, you want to compete hard and work hard, and you you have if you have the right talent on your team, you have a chance to win. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Yeah, and I thought that's uh, I thought that Tampa Bay did that this year. They added a lot of grit to the lineup. Yeah, um, with Pat Maroon and you go down the line. Luke Shen was back there. Bogosian, and all these guys. You know, they're not overly talented players, but they had grit. And you need grit to win. Mm-hmm. You got to have yeah, guys yeah. that you know are big bodies getting away, bang, wear people down. And that's our team. That's the way we're in St. Louis too. Yeah. So, pretty simple for them. Yeah, and then you mentioned earlier communication. You know, it's one of the biggest ingredients as well. It's letting the guys know where they stand because I've played for coaches that, you know, it's you don't they kind of ignore you. You know, when I work with coaches that you know they ignore their players when they you know they're yeah. going through some turmoil. But I think that's the worst thing you can do is abandon your player because they'll they'll never you know dig as, dig as deep as they can for you. You know, when it, when it no, you got to like your par- your players got to know you care about them. And yeah, you want them absolutely. Um, that they're important, yeah. And it's not only the head coach, but like you need your your assistant coaches have to always reach out to players and yeah. talk to them and bring them in and and do that work for you. That's a big part of it too. So, like like I said, I'm lucky to have real good uh, coaches, uh, guys that played the game and understand it. So yeah, you know, a guy it's like important. Steve Ott, has yeah, been right. around, played a tough role. You yeah, know? he's he's the same way. I used to love. Yeah, so like guys that like guy. that, they they know how to communicate to guys. They've been around and they know what they want to. They know they know what they need to, the, that what a player needs to hear. Yeah, and that's the most important thing for sure. You talk normal, yeah. talk normal hockey to the player. That's it. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, normal yeah. talk. Sure. You know, you get some guys that it's hard for them to talk normal. Yeah. You know, they never played the game. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, they're so. above the players, and yeah. yeah. 
They can dictate and your trip. It's it's about the players. In yeah. the end. you don't win. You don't win. Uh, you win because you're players. End of story. Right. Oh, that's so true. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. You know, you guys win the cup, and you you got a couple guys that don't need sticks out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just we, don't. we always say that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I told Eags that a couple of times. Why don't you try the next shift there, Ben Eager? I said, don't bring your stick out. Just go. Out and skate <laughs> just, if you don't use it anyhow. <laughs> When a puck gets on your stick, you lose it. Right. So just kick it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, ever, laugh. You, you ever seen a more witty guy during oh, a game? Oh, God. He could talk. Oh, my God. He had some yeah, good one-liners. He was good one-liners. Yeah, he was so yeah, he funny. Was really good. Oh, my God. He was a funny guy. I like the... That yeah. Ot- your boy Otter was a Otter lippy can, guy, too. Yeah, he's he, a funny guy. He lets it fly on the bench still. He's on the he laugh. I laugh. He's yelling at refs and yelling at the other players and the other oh, team. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, he's a he's a good chirper. I yeah, think it was my chirp. last year we we're playing Dallas and he's like he's like uh He's like, I, I don't pay any attention to you. You're going to be filling up my Gatorade bottles next year or something like that. <laughs> and he was pretty close to being right there. So yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Some, some, Remember that some night we were in Dallas and oh, Lavi, yeah. he wouldn't let Lavi buy. Yeah. Peter Lavi let. But before that, it was G was coming back from a concussion, and they had him mic'd for some reason. And he's going to take a face off, and Otter's taking it against him, and he says, Oh, I'm going to win this right back. He goes, no, Jesus, no, I'm, I'm going to win it. He goes, hey, I'm like number five in the league or something like that. And G goes, I'm not saying you're not a good player, but you're not going to win his face off. And G wins it straight back. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he starts lipping off and Otter, Otter's losing his mind. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That was pretty, pretty funny. funny stuff. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, Chief, like, seriously, uh, you, you, you step into that role there in St. Louis. They, you guys weren't doing that well and i know you've heard it a million times you, you, i know you're ready to move on because you're, you're worried about winning another one but it was amazing like how you guys just turned it on it was, it was like you weren't going to lose a game yeah yeah we i got- mean i know it's not that easy a lot of work goes into it but the fact that what you did was you know it was amazing well, I didn't do it a lot. Like again, your teams, your up the players got. We have a good team. We had a good yeah. team. We got a good team. We got good players. I mean, you know, it's just they needed to come together, and uh, the roles need to be um, identified a little bit more clear. And again, again, I'll say it again. It's about playing for the team, and that took a while for them to understand that and come around and really uh, grasp that part of it. Um, and then that started to happen in December. We play, we we're playing real good hockey. And, um, you know, we just kind of weren't getting enough wins. And then Bennington came in and, yeah. you know, he played really well and got rolling. So we had both goalies really playing well. And we just, we went on a four month terror, five yeah, month terror, crazy. you know, that started in Philly. It started in yeah. Philly. Yep. I did, it sure did. Yeah. Yes. They were, they, uh, there was a football game on. That was a Sunday night, I think, I, I think believe. You're right, yeah. And uh, Eagles were playing the Bears, maybe, in the playoffs. I can't remember exactly. And they ended up going to some uh, private bar, like, kind of yep. thing. They knew a guy and hanging out there together. And yeah. You love that song, Gloria, because I've heard you play it I way was before. Like, Oh yeah, I was like, "Why do they keep playing this Gloria song in the room?" And the guys start laughing. What are you talking about? I'm like, I really don't know why. And they told me the whole story, and I'm like, "Get rid of that song." It sucks. I said, "They can't find a better song than that." Yeah, yeah right. That's so funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, it was awesome to watch, though. Yeah, it right. was, man. Yeah, it was fun. It was good. It was good. Um, it was a lot of lot of work, but it was. Uh, Boy, when you win, it's like a relief almost, you know, when it's over. Oh, man, I can okay. imagine. You, you were close playing in your playing days a couple times, right? Yeah, you know, a couple times, uh, yep. And then once as an assistant coach, we lost Chicago. Yeah. I was close oh, that's to, right. Yeah, I forgot I was about pretty that. close yeah, right. to the one there. But, hey, it's not easy to no, do. and it's, it's, a it's a It's a tough league, and uh, it's such a close league. It's yeah. amazing to me how any team can beat any team in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. That's sure. the bottom line. That Dallas game, Game Seven, we never dominated a team more than that in the first three periods, and we're tied. And I'm like, oh, I can't believe it. I cannot right. believe we play that well and we're tied. Yeah. And then you know, a little, uh, some of the stuff that went on in the overtimes, like you're just like, 
It's luck. Yeah, you gotta right, get lucky. Is, yeah. yeah, you have to get lucky. Yeah. Gotta get lucky. Yeah. Um, and it's just, that's the way it is. Yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, Pat Maroon. You know, he was a Flyers draft pick. I mean, I actually coached him for half of a season in, <laughs> yeah. in, in the minors there. And, I mean, our, I the team pe- was horseshit, and we landed up sending him home and yeah. trading him. I mean, I mean, for a guy with I – mean, obviously he had a ton of talent, but I think he was – a little bit uh, unstructured, if you will. Uh, it's probably the best thing ever happened to him, you know, a wake-up call. I mean, he comes in the same Yeah, Louis I remember there. Patty here and stuff. Yeah. Young kid, just immature, needed yeah. to grow up and, you know, get in shape, that kind of stuff, you know. Like, he was such a talented guy and a big guy playing junior and even uh, before that, wherever he played in uh, St. Louis in that league. Right. You know he's gonna he's gonna be really good, dominate because of his size and his hands, his yeah. ability with the puck and stuff. But when you get to pro, you know there's guys you're you're playing against men now. Guys are your size. It, it's not easy. It took a while. Well, you yeah. just had to grow up. Patty's a great guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Patty um, has come to terms with what he is as a player. Um, and so when we like we signed him and he was on our team that year. He was um, he was the best guy in the locker room for sure. Number one uh, guy in the locker room there. He was vocal, uh, really had a real good presence about him in the locker room. Guys loved him, and and then he took care of business on the ice too. Yeah. Like stuck up for his teammates. He did that dirty work for us because we didn't have anybody else. So you know when he had to do it, he did it, and uh, he scored big goals for us. Yeah. And, you know, he played probably 12, 13 minutes a game, and that was his role, and he was satisfied with it. And, uh, like, again, he's just a great team guy. Yeah. And it's unfortunate we didn't we didn't get him signed quick enough. He went to Tampa, but I was happy for him. He yeah. won again. Yeah, right. Wonderful. And now he's got another two years. Yeah. So he's, his career is prolonged because of winning. Yeah, you know? that's it. And, that's right. you know, he's become that kind of a glue guy in the locker room. Yeah. That's what he is. Yeah. It was nice to see. I mean, I, again, having him briefly with the yeah. Phantoms there, we were a terrible team that year, and I think he was the, the scapegoat, and, you know, we ended up sending him home, but he said he was immature. He had a ton of talent. I mean, a big body, and a, you could tell he was a good guy. It was yeah, just really he took nice the brunt kid, of it, yeah. and uh, it's, I mean, it's nice to see him yeah. have success and yeah, that continue to grow like that. Yeah, yeah. But, no, we, uh, he, Patty's great. He, he lives in St. Louis still. And, yeah. yeah. He's got married, so, I saw. Yeah. It's, but uh, yeah, we we really liked Patty a lot. He was he was really good for our team. Yeah, yeah. Nice. We had a lot of good team. We have a lot of good guys on our team that way. Like they're just solid guys yeah. all around. Yeah. Lucky to have those type of guys. Yeah, you gotta have those guys, especially if you can go the distance. You know, when yeah. one guy's not going, pick another guy up, and character. Yeah, overrides everything. A lot of character. Yeah, a lot of good guys. So losing a few of them, but. Yeah, it's the way it yeah, goes. So. Yeah. What would you say is one of your most memorable moments besides winning the Stanley Cup with the Blues a couple of years ago? Um, the year that uh, we went to the finals in Washington, that was a that was a great team, a lot of fun. Um, just um, again, so it was a goalie coming in for a hurt goalie. Uh, uh, Ole Kolzig took over for Billy Ranford, who got hurt. Oh, that's right. And we went on a tear after that. Um, this is something that, that just changes everything and it changes the mindset a little bit. But I think that, that moment, the whole, that whole season and going to the finals, we didn't win, but that was a great team to play for and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. One of the, you one guys, of the highlights of my career, uh, for sure, uh, that year. You guys won game one, didn't you? No, we ended up losing four straight. Oh, you did? Oh, they were all I, close games. And this is the guys we had in that team. Tikkanen played for us. Yeah. We picked him up. And, you know, we had a bunch of good character guys on our team. And, oh. you know, Detroit was really good. Games were close, but we just – we just. I'm, I know what I'm thinking. You guys had a lead in the third. Yeah, well, we had a lead, and um, Tikkanen actually went in on a semi-breakaway, deked the goalie right out and missed the net. Like the goalie was out of it, and we he scores there, we win that game. Right, right. you know it changes a lot, but um, that's the way it goes. Yeah, but that was a hell of a team, really good team to yeah, play for that year. That. Yeah, tough uni, so Those <laughs> yeah, are- they're not the best. <laughs> I like the I like what they went back to the red, white, and blue myself. Yeah, but, yeah, no, I do Those too. Are cool. Yeah. 
So over 3,000 penalty minutes, uh, seventh overall in penalty minutes, 250 fighting majors. What's your most memorable fight or fist to cuff or, or suspension, anything in that world? Um, well, there's a lot of, like a lot of fights, but I'm, I think the best, one of the most memorable, uh, incidents that happened was, uh, I was playing for the Flyers, um, and we're playing in Washington and Dale Hunter, um, elbowed Gord Murphy behind a net oh, yeah. and just laid him out, killed him. And Paul Holmgren, she was clearly really upset. <laughs> clearly. Yeah. And I was like, is that when he was trying uh, to get over the bench? You know, to he Murray? was trying to get after Terry Murray and like people don't know this, but Terry Murray and him were buddies. Yeah. You know? They played together and, you know, yeah. but he, you know, Homer, he can go. And <laughs> so Keith Acton and Dale Kushner are my line mates and they're on each side of me. And I'm like, boys, be ready. <laughs> Homer comes down to me and he's like, I want, I want this Dale Hunter dead, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, kind of speech. Right. <laughs> I said, guys, when we get out there, I'm going to do something dumb. So just be ready because <laughs> we need to, we need to react here and do something. So I go and get on the ice and Donnie Beaupre was the goalie on a wash and he come out to play the puck and I just ran him right over, killed him and kind of all fall down and, and we're laying there kind of guys are piling on and everything. And Nick Kiprios is on top of me and I know Nicky cause I played with him in wash. So he ain't going to do nothing to me. So I'm sitting there and we're rustling around all this stuff like this. And it, it went on for a little while and actually Donnie Beaupre was you know, give me a few shots with his blocker and stuff. And, and I ended up getting escorted off the ice. And back then that double doors are right there yeah, and the refs right. threw me right out right away. I didn't have a mark on me, nothing. And I'm out of the game. And so I'm in the dressing room and here comes this Dale Kushner. I don't know if you guys remember Dale. Um, I actually played junior with him too. He come in and he's bleeding everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> where were you? <laughs> where were well, the rest booted me all right away. I don't know nothing I could do. Right. He goes, I got shit kicked three times. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's just funny the whole thing, you know, because it was a big brawl and everything. And I started the whole thing, and I got nothing. Get kicked out, <laughs> not a scratch on me. Oh, that's great. <laughs> but that was pretty funny. That was a pretty, that was pretty good. Oh, I remember, classic. I remember you telling me a story one time. Well, you've always told me you never lost a fight, <laughs> but, uh, which always made me laugh. But you, you were telling me one story. I can't remember the, the player, but you, you dropped the gloves and go. And I guess he caught you. Oh yeah. And you were out and you didn't even know what happened. And you wake up and the lines was got you and you're. Yeah. Like, we're playing Hartford and this is Keenan doing this thing, right? Uh, Paul McDermott was a guy. A he point. goes down, he takes a slap shot and hits Hexy up in the shoulder area. And Keenan comes over and he goes, that guy's trying to hurt Hexy with that shot. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I swear to God. He goes, we got to get that guy, you know? <laughs> and so, all right. In my head, I'm like, I had to go fight him. So I go out in the ice and I'm trying to get Paul to fight. And he's not a fighter. Like he's not, he's a big guy. He's tough, but he's not a fighter. He's finally drops his gloves. Like I'm after him, like trying to get him to fight me. And he drops his gloves finally. And you know, the next thing you know, I'm getting picked up off the ice by uh, one of the linesmen. And I know the linesman is his nickname's Chief too. Chief, uh, his, his last name is McCourt. And I go, what, what, what happened? Who sucker punched me? He starts laughing. He goes, nobody. I go, well, what happened? He goes, he drilled you. He caught you before. <laughs> I go, really? <laughs> he goes, yeah. Right to the penalty. He puts me in the box. I'm sitting there shaking my head. <laughs> oh, How man. was Mike with that? Oh, he didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't care. He's trying, trying to, to hurt Hexy. He's trying to hurt I got, oh, I got in a classic. couple fights one time against, uh, the Boston Bruins and I got beat up by that. Lyndon Byer Lyndon was pretty Byers. good. I fought Jay Miller and then I fought him after and I was pretty banged up. And it's like a day later, some or two days later, Mike calls me in the office and he goes, have a seat, you know, and I'm sitting down there and I'm still pretty banged up and he goes, Gonna send you to the minors. You gotta go down there and play a little bit. And it's not because you got shit kicked. <laughs> <laughs> <Go on. laughs> 
Oh, oh it's very confidence funny. booster, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, man. I remember you tell, we were, <clears throat> as a kid, I was like super upset because I saw it. And my dad knew that he was one of my favorite guys. And he said, I got, got lucky and got a hold of him, heard him, you know, whatever. But I said the chief one day busted his chops on the bus. We were going somewhere. And I said, he's like, yeah, boys, never lost a fight. And I said, oh, Lennon Byers. He goes, never went down, though. Yeah. <laughs> and I wheeled a hot nurse that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 X-ray said. technician. <laughs> <laughs> was her name Maria? <laughs> yeah, right. Might have um, her. Yeah, but uh, oh, that's funny, man. No, uh, Mike, funny. He's trying to hurt Hexy. Oh, yeah. Never, oh, yeah. <laughs> never anything. Like Classic that. stuff, boy. That's great, man. Classic stuff from Mikey. Oh, God. <laughs> appreciate you coming on, Chief. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, guys. It's been it awesome. Fun. Thanks yeah, for having time. me. And, uh, you know, I really enjoyed sitting here talking to you guys. Yeah, yeah that's man. good stuff. It's Bullshit awesome. and tell some stories. I wish. There's some things we can't talk about that would be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would be great, but, uh, yeah, we no. do that off camera. Yeah, we yeah, do. Yeah. And, and honestly, we appreciate you coming on, man. Thanks, guys. Big timer like yourself, Stanley Cup champion coach. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, seriously, though, we do appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's been great. A lot. Thanks, boy. I think I'll just throw my oh, <laughs> chief helmet on right now. I'll tell you what, I wear this sometimes. It just makes me feel tough. I mean, look tough. I mean, it doesn't now, fit your head. Yeah. <laughs> How does it fit yours? Holy shit! I don't know. <laughs> the thin Elvis padding in all there. Oh, this, this, yeah. That's that's the last, the last one phantoms? you wore, man. That's, that's the last one phantoms, you wore with the phantoms. That helmet's not legal anymore. To wear no, you, <laughs> you shouldn't be wearing that thing. That's for sure. <laughs> but thanks, Chief. We appreciate it. Thanks, yeah, I appreciate it. Wow.